Awesome. Thank you, Coach, for, for allowing me to, to have this platform to, to talk about a little bit of what we're doing at, at Utica College and uh, to really get Utica College's name name out there as well. Um, in this talk, we're going to be talking about two receiver route combinations, so kind of what we do and how we uh, form our offense around our, our two-by-two pass game. Um, my name is, is Coach Arvadis. Uh, don't hes hesitate. Give Utica College football a follow. We're right down there with our name. And then my Twitter handle is down there as well. Um, so I'm Coach Arvadis. Um, my name's Alex Arvadis. I, I grew up in Buffalo, New York. I went to St. Mary's High School out there, small little private school, graduated about 79 kids, had about 20, had 20 kids on our, on our varsity football team. So uh, we, we were pretty pretty small, had a lot of kids going both ways. Um, after college, I went out to, to Pennsylvania, played four years of, of football at Teal College, played for a phenomenal head coach, Kurt Reiser, out there who, who won a national championship at Allegheny, who I you know could, could speak the world of. Uh, coach Reiser did a really good job helping develop me and, and a lot of my teammates uh, along as well. After college, I went to, I was uh, fortunate enough to land a, uh, a graduate assistant coaching position at Utica College, where I've been working with the receivers um, since uh, 2017. I just finished my my third season there as well and, and was fortunate enough to be named uh, special teams coordinator as well um, and after after this season and uh, looking forward to going, going to the fall um, with that season. My contact information, if you guys have any questions about anything uh, that's being talked about, my email's right down here. And then if you guys, you know, want more of an immediate response i'll check my email about twice a day if you want more of an immediate response uh give my cell phone a, a call or a text if you guys want all right so a little bit about um our two receiver concepts i'm not i'm, I'm sure it's not much different than what you guys are running it um so what i'm going to talk more about is is how we teach it and how we really verbalize our our routes and what we're doing um, on, on that aspect, because there's a rule, there's a rule for just about every route our guys have, you know, we, we teach them to, to be very good reactors to the defense. And uh, what, what I like that we do is uh, we teach our receivers coverage, instead of just, you know, reading a box and say, hey, give me one high, two high safety looks, we teach them to actually read the whole field. And uh, they, they should be they should know that if there's two, if there's two safeties in the safety box that we're going to see either cover two, cover six, cover four, they're going to know, you know, those coverages, same as, as one high, same as zero high. So, you know, we give them the tools and, and we talk about that as well. So some of the so like concepts, like I said, you guys are probably doing the same concepts, but uh, I'm going to talk about the adjustments that we have off those concepts as well. Um, smash is our, is our main two receiver concept, high, low in the corner there. We'll run our smash out of our condensed sets and we'll also double move, um, double move as well. We'll run a curl flat concept. Again, we'll do that out of a condensed form. We have our double slants. They're not going to be the exact same route. We don't like when there's two routes next to each other that, that are the exact same. Um, talking about being a spread offense, which I'll get to in the next, in the next slide. Uh, we, we really emphasize spacing in our, in our concept. So to get to maximize spacing, one route's always going to change anytime we have two of the same routes and they're actually named different routes too. And, uh, so our kids know the difference between, Hey, do I have a slant or do I have a, a fin, which is a five yard in, um, what's the difference and why are we doing that? So we can vary the levels and the same thing. You're going to hear the same thing with our double post concept as well. So here at Utica, we run a, a spread offense. Uh, we've been running a spread offense since about 2010. Um, what, what we have changed, though, from, from previous years, about two years ago, we went to a clap cadence, and we feel like that's really benefited kind of how we call plays and, and why we call plays. So um, the quarterback, we're, we're in the shotgun 99% of the time, so it, it, it's very easily able to be operated at the line of scrimmage from our quarterback. He, anytime we go under center, then it's a verbal cadence. But um, like I said, because we're in the shotgun so much, we'll be able to, to use the clap cadence. He, we tell our quarterbacks all the time to utilize a fake clap, and that's just you know, you know, you know, forcefully bringing the the hands together, but not actually bringing it together to make the noise. And um, you know, that's allowed us to, to identify the def defense. It allows the the quarter the quarterback to see when the safety is rolling down or 
uh, if there is a cross blitz coming or, you know, what he's going to see. It allows me, I've been up in the box the past two seasons. It allows me to um, read the coverage at a different level. And it allows me to see how everything's going to be attached to a string on that certain play. And once we see that, if we decided to, uh, you know, bring, throw, put our dummy cadence in and we actually use a clap and they do it and they, and they rotate, you know, maybe we will be able to see roll and we'll, we'll attack to the other side away from the roll. Um, so Cloud cadence has been beneficial in, in ID the defense. And it's also given us a lot of, you know, free plays on the offense. We've been, um, if, if we do, if the defense does trigger our centers talk to snap the ball to the quarterback. And once he snaps the ball, all of the receivers go on verticals. And we've, we've gotten three touchdowns off that in the past. Then they're free, they're free touchdowns. So um, we've gotten three off those. And then we've also had a lot of big, big completions, you know, 30, 40 yards down the field based on those throws. So very beneficial for our, for our offense. You know, we teach the receivers and, and the quarterbacks coverage. We don't really necessarily teach them, you know, read the say, you know, safety box, how many safeties are in there. They're going to know if a corner is playing, you know, seven yards back, that it's some variation of three or four. Um, if that corner decides to trigger up on the snap, all right, I have a hard corner. Is that safety rolling over the top or where, how are the safeties working in unison with that corner? So, you know, they're kind of taught that everything on defense is attached to a string. And um, that's, kind of, that's how we talk in, in game plan. And then in the game, in the film room on Sunday. So with our two by two uh, concepts, we'll install them in the base form. So day one and day two, our two receiver concepts are going to go in. And we'll, we will install them in, in their mirrored, you know, form. We will never call them mirrored on game days, though. We, we believe that uh, we want to try to make a triangle read for our quarterback if we can. So anytime uh, we, we, we're having him, you know, manipulate his eyes to one side of the two receiver form, it's our thought that we're going to call something to the backside that's going to bring either a drag or a, a slam by the backside number two to get him into the window of where the quarterback's eyes are going to be looking. So he doesn't have to move his head all the way to the other side and then and then read. We want someone coming into the vision of the quarterback to allow him to read that. So how we call our plays is we all, we'll always start with the formation. We, we're we a signal-based team. Uh, receivers are going to stay on the same side so we can move quickly. Their job, once the play's done, run up to the line of scrimmage, get the signal, in the signal that formation is going to come first after the formation is going to be the main play call with the direction. So because in the two by two set, we have to read what we have to decide what direction is going to be our front side and where the quarterback's eyes are going to go to. So we're going to get that um, a play call. And then on the back side, we're going to tag something on the back side. If we wanted it mirrored, we just call one, we just call smash cat, right? Smash. But like I said, we're not going to mirror that. We want something coming across. We're going to tag, like I said, our double slant or, or double post on the backside to get something into the window. So here's smash. This is our base form of smash. And I'm sure everybody's running it the same way. Um, I think it's very important, again, like how you verbalize it to your receivers, how you verbalize it to your quarterbacks, and make sure everybody's on the same page. So really why we've had so much success on this concept and and why it's been our number one two receiver concept the last couple of years is, is how we teach this corner route by number two here. All right. The angle of their route will never change. And the quarterback's going to know that. And the quarterback that allows the quarterback to put it to a spot every time for that receiver to either go run under, or it's a lot easier for a receiver if he's going to a spot to adjust downward to a ball then have to flip his shoulder and then go upwards. So we tell him to go to the front pylon when we are outside of the plus 25 yard line. Back pylon if we are inside of the plus 25 yard line. And again, that angle is never going to change. It allows the quarterback to know where to put the ball. It allows the receiver to know, all right, I have to get to this spot. And then, then it's you know making the play once the ball's in the air. Our hitch route by our number one receiver is not going to look any different than if he's running a vertical. The only time it's when it's going to look different is once he gets to five yards, his pad level is going to be low and uh, he's going to rip through his inside shoulder and, you know, present his numbers to the quarterback and give the quarterback a big target. So you're going to see us hit on a couple different of these um, 
uh, a diff couple different of these routes here. And we're going to have a lot of uh, indie film from the receivers to kind of show you guys how I progress, how I teach in a progression and what we kind of do to run these corners and these hitch routes. All right. So, you know, for the quarterback, smash is a, is a two-fold footwork. All right. He has a couple different options. If, um, if he has free access, he can take a one and hold and rip it. All right. Also, he can do a three quick, whatever he, he prefers there. So um, if he has that free access, he's going to get it out there right away. If the cornerback's going to muddy up the read and he's moving pre-snap and starts, you know, three yards and then backs up five yards and then comes back up. All right. That's, that's, we call that muddy. All right. We're going to try to get him to work out of that throw. All right. So if he's looking to play the flat or man, we're going to take a three-step drop and hitch into the seven cut and look to try to get that uh, seven cut on our angle there. All right, quarterback three is going to look for the shortest throw, most amount of space, and best matchup in that in that order. All right, so you're going to see here in this film, we are going to have smash here down to the bottom. All right, so we're going to have our, our hitch here by number one. We're going to have our seven cut by number two. Like I said, on the back side, we're tagging something to get this number two all the way across, and this number one is going to also be trying to get across here late. All right, so... The quarterback knows pre-snap, all right? He's got a corner about seven yards off of the receiver playing outside leverage. We got a too high structure, all right? Because of how we teach and because of how we talk in our, in our, in our meeting room, quarterback's going to know, all right, probably cover four, all right, based on, based on this shell. Um, and that's actually what we're going to get. Quarterback's going to get his eyes, and you're going to see from the tight, quarterback's going to get his eyes to the hitch right away. He gets his highs to the hitch right away. Our receiver, I like that he he's violent out of his break. He kind of takes a couple steps outwards to give himself some more space. All right. We're always, we always, we always, we always, and, and we teach it. We finish with our pads. We don't like to, for our guys to go out of bounds. So if you got out, unless it's a two minute situation. So if you still got juice in the tank, all right, finish behind your shoulder pads, always finish forward, get as many yards as you can. All right, it's a great job here by number two. And this is really nice spacing. We teach our outside receivers that they're on the numbers. All right, again, spread offense. Use all 53 in a, in a third yards of space that you have horizontally. All right, so they're going to be on the numbers. Our slot here to the field, he's doing a good job maximizing his split. He's never going to be inside the hash. So we're going to stress this outside linebacker. All right, where it's tough here is the space of this slot receiver because he doesn't have much space he's going to look to split number one in the tackle. He does a really nice job here outside releasing this linebacker to give us a, a really free access hitch to that space. All right, finish behind his pads and, and fall forward. All right, you're going to see the quarterback here from the tight. He knows he's going there right away. He's going to move the back. Eyes go to the hitch, three quick, rips it, finish be, behind the pads. All right, it, on first and 10, we get 12 yards. You know, you're, you're never going to complain about that. All right, being able to keep the defense off balance between, you know, run and pass. We, we aim to be a balanced offense, but at the end of the day, we're going to do whatever works. All right, so if, if running the ball is going to be effective that, that week and we know that, you know, we're going to game plan, obviously, our best run plays. And if throwing the ball is going to work, it's, you know, don't, don't make football harder than it needs to be. All right, so this is just this is a drill, a, a four cone drill that we do to, to progress off our hitches. Okay, you're gonna see this receiver down here to the bottom. He does a really nice job. All right, they're supposed to they're they're playing they're bursting to the next cone and they're gonna plant just on one foot here. And you want to see them get their shoulders, knees, and toes all in a line. All right, and that's gonna show you how balanced they are. Again, if this was a hitch, Keegan here. He's going to rip through this, this, he's going to lift, rip through this left elbow across and he's going to flip his hips and come, present his numbers to the ball. All right. Here up top here, you're going to see, we are not in line knees, toes, chest is right here. All right. So we are not in line and that's going to make him fall forward here. All right. Now, ideally at the end of this, you want them to bring this back leg that's up. Again, we talk about finishing every rep. You want them to control it to the ground. All right, you're going to see here, number 15 kind of brings it down quickly. You want to have them control it to the ground. All right, the, the, it shows you as a coach that, okay, they're on balance when they're getting out of their hitches, okay? So that's something that we do to progress through the hitch, and then you're going to see it here. This is by 44. He's really going to be in front. All right, and you want to, you want to have your kids test them. The first day, this is something we'll do 
in, in day one of practice, you want to test their limits. Tell them to sprint as fast as they can to that cone. Once they get to that cone, break down. You want to see chest, knees, toes all in a line. All right, and that'll help. And then, you know, a buzzword I'll use for them is to drop the anchor if they need to, to stop their momentum. And that's, you know, bringing their butt down so uh, that, you know, they're really stopping their momentum. So you're going to see their 44 fall forward. So something to, to progress off that is we'll just set up three cones and then we'll have them run hitches. All right, so this is a really good job by, by eight here, bursting off the ball. Like I said earlier, the difference between a hitch and a vertical at five yards is nothing. We want them exploding off the ball you know, running full speed, ripping through that inside shoulder, presenting presenting their numbers to the quarterback. So eight here is doing a good job. He's doing a really nice job. He's he's six three. He's doing a good job coming out of his stance with with low pad level. We, we talk about keeping a low profile, low pad level. Hide your numbers. All right, hide your numbers all the way through the route until you're presenting them to the quarterback, giving a big open target. Okay. You're going to see here, 20 is going to do a good job keeping a, a low profile. He's one of our smaller receivers. What I don't like here, and, and this translates in, into any route they run. So I don't like in this freeze frame here how he has both feet off the ground. He wants to be able to keep at least one foot in the ground to, to keep and maintain his control. All right, because if a corner decided to come up to him and hit him, he's probably falling backwards. Right. And like I said, this isn't necessarily for a hitch for a hitch. We're going to throw it, whether he, you know, if he hops into it because of the timing of the concept and timing, if, if the corner is off, we're probably going to complete it. But when you're talking curls and digs and comebacks, that time that that room for error shrinks just that much more. And you want to make sure that they have full, full body control. So getting them to, to stop hopping out of their break is something that we try to try to look for and try to eliminate. And it's good anytime that we can get our drills, our, our individual drills filmed for this. We do, so we can talk about that in our in our individual meetings. So this is why teaching the angle route of our corner route is is, is so important because we're going to tell him again. We're going to tell him because we're we're outside of the plus twenty five. We're going to tell him to take his route to that front pylon there and put it on that angle. All right. So that quarterback does a really nice job putting the ball on that front front pylon tight end does a nice job running to that angle tight end makes a really good catch over the shoulder all right and and we get 35 yards off it on a third and three when really quarterback's first read there was a little muddy going to the hitch and then he hitches into it and delivers a strike to the tight end all right so what you see here and this again tight ends do this receivers are going to do this and tight ends will actually come to the indie our indie to, to work on it is second level releases. And that's very important when, when running a corner route. All right. So this is something that you're going to see. And you saw JJ there, our, our senior tight end, you saw him work a hammer at the second level to, to get hands off of the release. All right. So this is what we'll do. We'll get a, one of our crayon, um, one of our crayons here. And I have, a, I, I, I have a lot of help. I've had uh, two student assistants the last couple of years that, that came to every practice to, to help me out. So, you know, they were really good at, you know, whatever I needed. So as many, you know, helping hands as you have, don't, you know, don't hesitate to get them involved. If, if you know, you have, you know, just the designated kickers not doing much during practice, get them in your indie, have them snap to the quarterback, have them be a, a live read for receivers, have, have everybody doing something, getting everybody involved during practice. So um, we bring a crayon here. Anytime the crayon and what we've uh, adjusted this drill to is I, I would like our, our coaches here to actually get, on the hip of the receiver because if the receiver doesn't feel anything and run in his route he's not going to work a hammer or he's not going to work one of his wipes so we're going to get that on the receiver anything low he's going to hammer down anything high he's going to try to wipe away we talk about being violent all right so you see 20 here you know simulating his sprint all right he's being very violent with his hammers he's going down and out and his wipes he's just up really quick and then back into his sprinting form so this is something that we're going to do to to work getting hands off of, of the second level releases and really it, sometimes at the third level on some of those deeper deeper progressing routes all right so now what we do to, to manipulate our smash concept is we can run it out of one of our tight sets so what we do in our tight set is we're going to invert who's on and off the ball so we're going to bring our our slot receivers on the ball three yards from the tackle our outside receivers are going to go one by one 
from our from our uh, slots, and we're still going to run smash. Now the routes you're going to see here, the routes by number one are different, but at the end of the day, if it was still regular smash, they're going to get to where they would be if it was regular smash, right? That's where they would end up being. So our guys know that when we run smash out of a condensed set, you know, the route's going to change, but they're going to end up in the same place where they would be um, if it was just regular, regular smash. So you're going to see us here in one of our tight sets here. We use the fake clap. We get the defense moving a little bit. We have a one high safety shell where it looks like that, that uh, weak safety is going to come down and, and help and run or help in the pass there. Quarterbacks read here. He likes, this is our smash side up top here. Up top, we're going to run this smash. So he's going to see the corner bail right away. He's going to take a couple steps backwards. We're actually going to get a linebacker that was on the line of scrimmage, going to trail our hitch. Or really, we call it a one route. It's a five-yard speed out. So he's going to trail our, our flat window. Our quarterback takes a good three-step drop, delivers it on time. 29 is not able to see that it's coming. We make the catch, turn up field. We get the first down. So on second and seven, we get seven yards right at the first down stick, and we got a new new uh, set of sticks. So really, again, what's he reading? He's reading his smash side. He reads that this corner here, corner, a couple steps back, he knows he's not going to be able to, to get to a ball right there if we put it right there in that window. Number one there, number one can do a better job with his angle to the seven cut. So he, he declared his angle to be right here. If he kept running, he's running out of bounds at the, at the 25 yard line. If he puts himself up here, that's going to allow the quarterback to either a throw it at that pylon. If we beat this guy, number five here, or throw it flatter and it's going to allow him to come down to the ball. And, uh, you know, again, like I said, a lot easier coming down to the ball to catch it than trying to track over your shoulder and having to turn a blind eye to it. So, that's something we can work at uh, with our seven cuts. And then, like I said, two by two, we're trying to get something across the middle here. So if we did have to progress here, we were supposed to have a dig here by our backside and there's our window to that dig. So always trying to get a triangle read into, into our progression. Always finish, never, never settling to go out of bounds, always finishing behind our pads. Even, even some of our receiver or smaller receivers have really bought into that. And then again, speaking about being aggressive, that really translates into our blocking and, and kind of the mindset we try to try to have when we're blocking. All right, so here we go again. We're in our tight set. You're gonna see, all right, we get a two high shell, we get corners about five yards off. So we're either thinking, you know, cover two, cover four. Our guys see that these uh, safeties aren't outside the hash, they're inside the hash. This one's on the hash. All right, so just by pre-snap look, they've already eliminated in their head. All right, probably a cover four look. All right, but, but we'll see. We always talk about working on reading the coverage as well after the snap. So we get a clean release here by, by our number two. Again, we're gonna have smash ups up top here. Smash up top. The cornerback's gonna you know, be in limbo here. He's gonna flip his hips to cover our hitch. Our, our, out route doesn't really do a good job. We don't really, we never want to let a defender determine the break point of, of where we're trying to get to. And that's what this receiver does here. That guy tries to get hands on. We got to fight pressure with pressure, try to lean into that. And then at five yards, then we want to get on our out route. All right. So he, he kind of quickens that up for the quarterback. All right. That's fine. That corner is going to go to Claire, flip his hips to it. We're going to have, all right, this angle here wasn't, that wasn't drawn very well. We're going to have this angle to the front pylon for our receivers. So again, he flattens it flattens the the route here. He kind of determines for the court the quarterback where to put that ball. Now if he takes that higher, maybe he beats him over the over the top and we score it we we get a we get a touchdown at the pylon. All right. Um he has to actually here make again talk about it's tougher adjusting backwards than forward. He makes a, a very tough catch. Um we train our receivers what to do when they are in this in this exposed position anytime we got our rib cages exposed and we're going for a catch we tell them you know vacuum seal get the ball from point a to point b which is in your chest as quickly as possible so you're going to see here especially from the tight shot um how quickly our receiver does that and um how how long the ball is actually exposed for 
because that the defensive backs they're trained you know they're punching the ball out they're trying to go for rib cage anything to attack that receiver all right we got to protect ourselves bring the ball from point a point b vacuum seal bring it in as quickly as possible all right so you're going to see here from the tight shot quarterback pump fakes that's gonna that's gonna treat as his hitch for his three and hitch he still delivers it on time all right expose up in the air right down to the chest turn the back toward the defenders land on the back on the ground get up celebrate with your teammates because that's a big play second and 12 you know we're in a we're in a uh, behind the sticks um situation with our offense we go and make a 23 yard catch you know our guys are excited fresh fresh sticks so this is something we're going to do. We'll double move our smash. All right. A lot of guys, a lot of teams might double move the hitch. All right. And they'll put, you know, the Y on something else. All right. Uh, hitches and goes are, you know, one of the more common double moves. We double move our corner route. And that's really to take advantage of, of any too high structure, which we've seen a lot. We've seen a lot of cover fours the last, the last two years where their safeties are playing really low. So if we wanted to call one of our double move smash, nothing's going to change except one of the slot receivers. So the slot receiver that's running the double move, he knows that he can short his route, his first, his, his angle to the corner route by about two yards. Cause that's going to take time for him to take three steps onto that angle and then flip his hips completely and try to split the middle of the field. So at 10 yards, we're going to take uh, an angle to the corner route. It really doesn't matter if it's to the pylon or not. We don't really talk about that. We just, our main goal is to get that safety's uh, hips flip. Once we do that, we're taking three steps to that angle, ripping through that out or that inside elbow, trying to cross face, and that ball that's you know from the quarterback is going to be delivered either you know a, a two ball or a three ball if we completely beat them over the top. Three ball if we completely beat over the top. If the safeties are still back and we're trying to hit this in front of them, it's going to be a two ball. All right. And you're going to see us run this uh, again quite a bit. You're going to see us run this to attack two high, two high shells. So you're going to see here this team played cover four all game against us. So we really knew, you know, what we were going to get. We're going to get our double move route by this slot receiver here. All right, his main job again get a clean release at the second level. That's not going to be a problem based on where this outside linebacker is playing. He knows that he just has to work off of the safety here. We're trying to manipulate that safety. So he's going to fire off the ball, get the 10 yards. All right. Again, he can, I, if he's sloppy towards the corner route, that's fine. All we got to do is manipulate that safety. So we take our three steps, shoulders and hips are toward that corner on that third step. We're ripping that inside shoulder, looking to cross face. Quarterback, again, this is our two ball over the, over the linebackers in front of the safeties. We make one guy miss, we're on the move, All right? So this was first and 10. This uh, was a start the drive. We cross face to the safety over the linebacker in front of the safety, make one guy miss and go score. We get hawked down at about the 10 yard line, but a uh, really good good play by one of our freshmen at the time. Um, you know, not letting the stage get, get too big for him on homecoming and making a big play, you know, for us, so. And, you know, we can run that double move out of out of that tight set, which I'll show you clips from. And we can, if you know, if a team catches us in a one high, you know, we have answers for that too. So we're going to get to that in, in a little bit. All right, so here's a drill that we do to work our double move. This doesn't work the exact route, but it really works the concept and, and what, our guy, what I want our guys to think about while running a double move. So I have a cone here and a cone here. All right, their their job is to run as fast as they can to get around this cone. So that's going to be their first move. I want them once they get around this cone to take three steps to this cone, plant, and then get forward as fast as they can, and really kind of shoot themselves out, um, shoot themselves out of a cannon. All right, and it's three sets. And how I want them to do that, and I want their shoulder knees and toes all in, in a line. And you're going to see some of our guys do that. You're going to see some other guys not do that and see how, how much slower it gets them out of that route. So explode up to that line. We take three steps, shoulders, knees, and toes. Does a pretty good job getting them all in a line. Get the hips flip, explode out, finish with a catch. All right, you're going to see 
how quick some guys are going to want to get out of it. And that's going to be, that's like the number one talking point when get, when talking about double moves, you know, receivers are magician. You want to give the illusion. You're going to be one place. And then the next thing you're, you're out. Right. So here, this receiver gets around the cone. He's going to take this giant step. All right. That shows me he's, he's in a hurry. You don't need to be in a hurry while running double move. You have time. We have answers in our playbook for you not to do that. We, we adjust our depths of our route. Right. So he takes that long stride and now he takes, he really just takes two steps. He's not in line here. All right. He's a little slower out of the route. One of our big receivers, he just drags his feet there. This is a really nice job. Getting the arms going, firing the arms at the top of the route, making sure he's dropping the anchor, getting out of it. This is not what we want to see. Shoulder, head and shoulder in one area, knees in one area. He's got three different levels going on. He's not going to come out of this break as fast as he wants. All right. And so what we can do, too, to, to manipulate this drill, if you got an extra set of hands at practice with you, you can put a coach right here with a crayon. And if you want, a lot of times when a corner gets beat on a double move or surge, they're looking to grab cloth. 15 yards, pass interference is, is a lot. You know, you can take that. You can't take a 60-yard touchdown going over you and for it being your fault. They're going to try to grab cloth, do whatever it can, whatever they can to, to stop you. So you can put a coach there with a crayon, you know, try to have contact with them, and then that's where you work the hammer again as a, uh, as a receiving core. So I don't like here how that re this receiver is standing straight up. His shoulder uh, level is high. He's got a high profile. Gets around this here. Uh, he takes five steps and gets out of it. Um, this is, a, again, we, we you don't want your guys to, to be quick out of this. You want them um, to realize they have time, take their three steps, get everything in line, and then accelerate out. So here we go again out of our, our um, two by two. We use a dummy cadence. All right, we see safeties at 10 yards. We see corners at, at five to six yards. Um, you know, this, this team, very high tendency going cover four. We're going to get our double move by this receiver here. He's going to quicken it up a little too soon. He takes his corner out at about six yards. He can push his stem a little, a little further. Like I said, eight yards is where, where we try to aim. He's going to get it. But he, what he does is a really nice job of getting his shoulders and hips turned completely to his corner angle. That's going to get the safety to open up and run that way. Once he runs that way, all right, we're ripping that inside shoulder, we're looking to cross face. And again, it's going to be a two ball. All right, we're still completing this in front of the safety. Dummy cadence here by, by us. Taking five steps, hitching into it, delivers it right to the chest, vacuum seal, protect the ball from the defender. All right, so this is what we're going to do if we get a one high shell. So I told you we even have answers. So even if a team is primary cover four and you feel very good, you're going to get too high sh shell. You never know what the defensive coordinator is going to going to call if he's going to, hey, get, get in a one high. All right, um, we have answers for that. So anytime a team gets in a one high and we have our double move call, well, shoot, we still have smash. Are we still going to have our hitch? All right, so this was a team that this team did a very good job this year getting in and out of different coverages um, before the snap. They would they manipulated their linebackers, their safety levels, and uh, what was it were, were a base 14. All right, so you're going to see here up top, here is going to be our double move. All right, it's going to be a little tough for him to, to get off this second level free, but he's still going to run his double move. All right, if we get cover uh, one high look with off corners, we know we're still going to be able to take this hitch all day so it's a good job by our quarterback in this clip recognizing the one high all right not wanting to get too greedy all right good job by our, our receiver realizing that he's still part of this route a lot of receivers when they hear double moves called you know obviously there's still 10 other guys playing so they might want to take the playoff all right so it's a good job by this receiver still running his assignment all right knowing that he's part of the concept catches the ball and you're going to see him again finish behind the shoulder pads all right, all, always falling forward. So on first and 10, where we think we might get a 30-yard hit as an offense, all right, we don't get greedy. The quarterback doesn't get greedy. He, he goes through his identification of the defense. We take the hitch, and we still get 13 yards. And we got a new new set of sticks. All right, so that was a really nice job by the quarterback recognizing the one high coverage there. 
All right, instead getting into his hitch footwork. So like his hitch footwork is different than his his double move footwork. So he's just going to three quick it up, deliver the ball to the to the receiver, and let the receiver finish the play strong. All right, so here we go. So you saw us run smash out of our tight concept, out of our condensed two by two. This is our double move out of our two by two. So we can still do that out of out of this formation as well. So we're going to have this double move up top here. He's going to run his uh, his five yard out again, still getting to that hitch, that flat window. This receiver here, he's going to he has to do whatever he can to get off this press. All right. He's got the leverage on this guy. Just outside release. Once you outside release stack, get your eyes to the safety, manipulate this safety at 10 yards, get to the corner. He flips his hips. We're looking to cross face and, and catch in front of him. You're going to see this receiver do a really nice job working all aspects of that route outside release don't allow hands on he could take his angle more to the corner and get his eyes and hips flipped over there he does just enough to get that safety to commit cross face we get a ball placed right where it needs to be you're going to see from the tight any lower this ball is either getting picked or knocked away all right so we get that ball in the end zone receiver does a nice job catching outside of this framework Back, you see sealing the ball, bringing it to the chest, finishing for a score here. You're going to see here five steps by the quarterback, any lower of a ball. So that's that's working that two ball we, we call for our quarterbacks. Any lower, that's going to get knocked down by the by the linebacker. This was right before half and uh, allowed us to bring it to a, a three point ball game um, at, at halftime in, in one of our biggest games in our in our program's history. First postseason win that we got it as a program. So this was a really nice job executing by our quarterback, by our receiver, and that play call. You're going to see it here again. Again, we're going to like it out of a too high structure. Same receiver, manipulate that safety, eyes, hips to that, to that back pylon, cross face, two ball right where it needs to be. Receiver here, you're going to see from the tight, does a really nice job shielding his body once he catches. Shield the body, turn the back towards the defender, touchdown. All right, so next, our, our next two receiver concept is we'll talk our double slants. Again, we don't necessarily run two slants. We, we won't run the same route next to each other. We want to vary the levels and vary the differences of those routes. All right, so you're going to see by our number two, and again, I have this just in our base form. This is mirrored. All right, we won't ever call it mirrored. Usually we'll tag this to the backside of like a, a smash or one of our other quick game calls. This is a shave slant by this number two receiver. His job is to get inside leverage of any second level defender over him or any second level defender outside of the box. So if he's here, that outside linebacker is here, he's going to work this angle more there, splitting his mid line. And then once he gets there, he's going to rip through that inside shoulder. All right. That's going to be important because we want to manipulate that, that rover. And then once, that, that outside linebacker. And then once he declares where is he go, he's going to go, is he going to run with him or is he going to go to the flat? That's when we're going to make our read. All right, we're, we're in-outing that, that hook flat to the player there. Our outside receiver, he's going to have an option route. We call this a hitch to bang. So if this cornerback is playing off and we get off leverage and he bails right away, we're going to hitch up at five yards and take that. If we get a hard corner and a hard corner is anything pressed to playing five yards, so a cover two or a hard press cover one corner, we're going to look to go five yard in. We'll call it a bang route. We'll call it a thin five yard in. Um, and we'll look to square that off and keep that a 90 degree, 90 degree route. We're looking again, any, any outside linebacker, we're looking to high low him. All right. So if he wants to squeeze on that, we're going to have this route. If he wants to stay to his hook flat, we're going to have this route quick. And again, like our, our smash footwork, all right, our quarterbacks, um, they're going to one and hold this or three quick it. It's just like they'd be throwing a hitch. All right, they're going to read inside out, shortest throw, most amount of space, best matchup for them. So here we go. Um, we're actually in this clip here, we're going to play action just to get the linebackers down just a little bit. Uh, we want to get this guy down. This game, um, number one, was has been an all-conference player for us the last two, year, two years. They wanted to bring one of their better corners and, and shadow him all game um, so that you're going to see late movement here by the defense. All right. This out, this uh, play action is going to get that middle linebacker down just a little bit. 
where now this cornerback here is off. We don't necessarily, he's going to take three steps to his midline and we don't want to get the toes on this route. We're just looking to cross face, get yourself on an angle where you're going to catch this behind the linebackers in front of the safeties. It's going to be a one ball. It's going to be fired right into the chest. Catch tuck turn. Now a little tough for our quarterback. We'd like to get this ball out a little sooner, but because we run the play action fake to it, he's got to just take a split second longer to gather and throw the ball. All right, but a good job by our receiver, getting himself on the proper angle, catching again, finishing behind his pads, always falling forward. All right, not letting just the, the wind knock him down. Good job by number one there. Uh, up top, we get that hard corner, so we got a press corner. Again, so this is our double slant concept. Again, being physical at the line of scrimmage, we, we preach that in just about everything we do. Physical at the line of scrimmage, five yards square, and he's an option here too. So if that linebacker doesn't bite on the run action, all right, and he stays back and that window is closed, we're going to have this filling behind it. And it would look good. So here we go. This was a clip from two years ago. This was a very heavy zone blitz team. Uh, we're in our empty set, our zero personnel, five receivers out there. Uh, they're in a three down lineman set. They're going to blitz from distance and move around a little bit. We have our double slants up here to the top. Number two has nobody to work off of. So he's just going to look right away and look quickly. If that ball is thrown to him, we're looking to catch and then get our foot up and, and get north as fast as we can. What the quarterback decides to work here is our hitch to bang. We have an, we have an off corner who's going to take a couple steps back. Our quarterback works at our, the hitch to bang. We catch it. This is, you know, having athletes, not having athletes, preferably get your ass at the athletes to, to run the hit, this hitch to bang route. Turn inside. Back out to the numbers, something that we preach. That's where you're going to score. Get back to the numbers. All right, finish at the pylon and score. So a third and six, something that as a coaching staff, we're looking, all right, let's just pick up the first down and let's just try to keep moving the sticks. All right, we end up getting a hitch route at six yards, turn up the field. All right, we get to the pylon and score six. First touchdown of the game. All right, so this was a really nice clip um, of, of, again, that double slant kind of, that double slant changing. This is why, again, you're going to see up top our double slant up top here. On the back side, uh, we actually, this is a mirror. This is one of the times we mirror it because we're, we knew we were going to have the space to um, our outside receiver maxes his splits. He gets a hard press corner, so he knows he's got a fin route five yards and in. He does a really nice job here knowing what to utilize at the top of the route to get himself open. He doesn't execute it completely. All right, but he takes the, the an outside release. He looks to get he he works the uh, throw by release. So preferably where he's going to make a mistake is he gets his hand up at the shoulder. We talk lat to glute, get the hand to his lat to glute, throw him by, rip that rip that arm up, and then come flat. All right, because he's a little high up, that corner is able to get hands on and makes it a little tougher throw. But we still work our five yard in quarterback puts it in a good spot and we get six yards on a second and five. So this is a drill that we're going to work to work that throw by. All right. I will be as a coach. I like to, again, it depends if, if you try to preach, you want to preach to your guys to give them, tell them to give good looks during practice. There are some drills where I know I want to give a specific look. So I'll just, I'll just do it and be very hands-on with it. So this is one of those times you want to give as much pressure as you can when you do it. All right, you're going to see here not the best camera work angle, but Zach Steele, one of our senior slot receivers at the time, he's going to get his hand right on my glute. He doesn't do a, a good job really knifing through with that left arm of his, but what he does do a good job of is coming down flat off of that. So he, the, the job of the receiver here, and, and Brandon Woods, one of the juniors at the time, he does a really nice job bringing that, that knife technique of the arm up after this rep bringing that arm up, you want to tell them, all right, burst off the ball, give a look again, nothing's different between this route and a vertical up until five yards, sell that vertical. All right. As a coach, I'm leaning into them, fight pressure with pressure. All right. Get the hand on the, on the rib cage, the glute down, rip through and then get down flat. You see here, we work off lines. So I'm working off this, this white line here for them to let them know if, if they went flat or not. 
does a nice job. So, you know, that's again, one of our second level uh, releases that you can work on a corner, you can work on a, on a, on a linebacker if you need to. In this clip here, you're going to see us in a three by one set. I'm going to motion our running back here to a two receiver set and get in an empty set. We're gonna work our double slant here. Again, a lot of zone blitz. So this team, again, in and out of a lot of different things pre-snap. Once they uh, declare that they're gonna work two linebackers here to the middle, this running back who's not used to running this does a really nice job realizing, all right, I have nothing to the second level influencing me. I can look right away. All right, so he, once that ball snapped, he's looking right away, quarterback, doesn't hesitate, one step, fire, fires it to him, all right? Alfred here is in a three, three deep, two under set. We're going to make a move on that safety. Teach your receivers downfield blocking, working up instead of working back. I know, you know, the NFL and college football has done a lot to eliminate the crackback block. So we, even a couple of years ago, have been teaching working up. All right, you're going to see number two, who is a senior, you know, one of the one of the better uh, leaders I've had in the receiver group the last couple of years who is really taking guys under his wing, um, work up the field here, work to get a block. All right. But our running back here, running backs, even know to try to get to the numbers and, and the numbers score. So we, we shake this block because it, or we shake this tackle here. If we had number two is working up field to get a block and we'd have an alley there to, to go score. So that's a really nice clip there. Kind of just talking about downfield blocking and uh, kind of our philosophy on it. All right, so you're going to see the same clip here, but uh, you're going to see us in a three by one. We're going to motion uh, the running back out again. We're going to run our double slants here to the boundary. All right, <laughs> a couple good, a couple positives, and a couple negatives in this play. All right, negatives uh, being uh, ball security, positives being uh, you know finishing the play. You know, always you know behind our pads. Quarterback's going to see the space again. Another zone blitz. They're sending five. We're going to get an off corner here, so this receiver knows I'm running a five yard hitch. All right, this was the same receiver in the clip making the downfield block last clip. All right, presenting numbers to the quarterback. All right, feeling where the corner is, turning inside, making a move on them. All right, we just we don't teach palming the ball, switching it over here. All right. But what he does do, he does a really nice job using that offhand as a weapon. That's something we'll always talk about, using the offhand as a weapon. All right, and what I do like after he does that, I don't like the ball switch, but I do like him fighting to get back down to the bottom of the numbers, looking for that hidden yardage that we always talk about. All right, that hidden yardage is anything down by the by the, those last end of the hashes there. All right, so that was a really nice job by, again, one of our senior leaders. Um, this is something we can do. As, as a coaching staff with a different play call is if we see man or if we see where a one high setting and we know we're going to get hard man all right we can work um this number two instead of a slant if this linebacker is not being very aggressive if he's back into his pass drop we can get this number two on a on a slot vertical get him to the bottom of the numbers and we could hit that so you're going to see here up top, we end up working our bang route because we get the off corner and we feel uh, we have the space to do that. Uh, we work the five yard in and we catch finish behind our pads. But if we had worked this this play side here and we work this slot fade by number two, all right, he's going to have some room to run there. And he's got his angles to finish at the top of the numbers with the ball. All right, so that's something that we can do if we decide if we see man um, where we could work the ball. And again, you're going to see it here too. We get man, we get off man. All right, we take a step and hitch up into this this five yard in here, and we deliver that ball on the numbers. We're going to be able to again get that foot in and get north. We have drills to to teach our guys to to get north as quickly as they can. Um, all right, so here this is going to be a drill again, another uh, second level downfield release drill that we do for our guys, um, they'll allow them to win either way. So if they got an in-breaking or an out-breaking route, we give them the tools where you can win your release it, anyway, whatever the leverage of the corner is giving you, all right, for the best release. We always just call that a best release, take the leverage that they're giving you, all right? So here, if we have an in-breaking route and we need to beat win to the inside, all right, this is what we call our chicken wing, 
release. All right. So again, talking about fighting pressure with pressure, being physical. All right. We want to get to this pad here. Uh, the guys with the pad are the defenders. We want to get our shoulders and elbows into the pad and get our bodies underneath us. Once we get to the pad and we want to get to our break, we want to go down with our elbow and extend with our leg and fire out of that. And again, I'll, that's something I'll work off a line for them to get used to going down flat off the line. All right, so that's one of our chicken wing releases. All right, our last two receiver concept that we have here is our double post concept. And I really like, you know, how we teach this route. Uh, we can do this off our play action. We can do this just based off of a two by two. This is one that we're not going to mirror necessarily because we want uh, if the linebackers are dropping, because this is a deeper progression uh, for our quarterback. If the linebackers drop and get out of there, we're going to be able to hit our shallow underneath here. If we get free access and we got a safety up here and the safety's rolling this way and we get an off corner and we like this matchup, this is where we're going to go to our backside comeback. Um, not, we, I think we've hit it once last year. Nothing that we were trying to work, but if we if we get it, then we're gonna then we're gonna use it and get, try to get the free access that way. Um, but really, with our post, our post by number two, we call this our Pittsburgh post. So his job is to get a clean release, outside release. This is one where we tell them strictly: you got to get an outside release. You getting an outside release is going to manipulate whatever third level safety that there is. At, at, on top of you so you have the outside release once you outside release the outside linebacker get to about eight to nine yards cross face of the first safety you see so this angle here by this pittsburgh post is if that safety is right here all right after you cross his face you want to look for the ball but look for the ball on an angle where you're going to pass the rear of this safety all right, so if that safety is dropping back, we want to get you on a higher up angle. And we're going to deliver this ball again. This is going to be a ball splitting those two safeties. Okay. Our number one receiver is going to have a, a just a normal post. He has the option to convert it to a vertical if we get a press corner. I don't know if, if any of you coaches out there have the answer to winning a post against a press corner. Um, you know, please reach out to me and, and, and help me. Uh, get get the answer for that this is something we've had problems doing so we've just given him the pat you know in the past two years we've given him the option if he gets pressed to convert it to a vertical and just hold the top of the numbers um so that just naturally starts the stack portion of his post and it gives the quarterback some space to miss to the outside or lead him over the top if he wants so we're going to read the play side safety bites on the dig, throw the post. This is uh, cover four beater one on one. Bite on the bite on the dig, throw the post. If the post's not there, come down to the shell. If we get a pre pre snap one high, we're going to read the outside linebacker. If he's going to collision the dig, throw the shallow. Uh, if he's pretty passive on that, he comes down to the shallow. We're going to have the dig in in the first window behind. So you're going to see here. So in this clip, this is one again why the why the clap cadence is so big for us. Um, we're going to utilize one of our uh, dummy cadences. We're going to clap our quarterback claps. The defense kind of tips their cap. We see that the safety is coming down here. So we know that it's going to be some kind of cover three with weak roll. We know that this safety's taught to, to squeeze on number two vertical. If he gets anything past eight, that's why outside releasing is so important for this route. This safety is going to be in a one high. So he's going to drop to the middle of the field. All right. So it's important for this. We have our double post up top here. It's important for this receiver to get outside of that outside linebacker there. All right, stress this safety off his hash. All right, we're going to get that. We're going to get the outside release. We cross face of that first third level defender we see. All right, this, this receiver does a nice job crossing face. If we want, we do have a nice angle where we could set up hitch into this and throw that on a, on a one ball linebackers come down on the play action. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty bad here. All right. This corner, he knows he's to the field. That's a very tough throw to make. Luckily we have a quarterback that can make that throw. All right. He's going to squeeze on number two here, leaving this Rover or outside linebacker to go trail the hip of the post here. And you're going to see why we tell that post, um, to convert to a vertical, we don't want him crossing face on a, on a squeeze corner that we're going to get two routes that run into each other. 
We get that receiver keeping the top of the number landmark. We get the outside linebacker running to it. All right, first touchdown of the year, first game of the season. Um, we call that on our second drive, and we get a 50-yard touchdown. Get everybody going. Um, so that was that was one of the touchdowns we feel like with the way we verbalize it that we're able just to kind of steal points off of. Our next clip here, you're going to see. So we still get cover three. I don't like – so we got an outside release by number two here. We don't get one. If we do – outside release we might get this corner to squeeze just a little bit more if we get him to squeeze a little bit more then this receiver knows all right i got it. i got the numbers i'm vertical and i'm keeping this uh for a touchdown all right before you know the play action is going to get the get the linebackers down our pittsburgh post does cross face uh, it's not necessarily at the at the angle we want all right but we could hitch up and in, into that and throw that there because we don't get the outside release, you see how that linebacker gets back, or that cornerback, excuse me, gets back on his track, does a nice job getting back to the top of the numbers. Our number one receiver's on, in a little limbo here. He doesn't know whether to cross face or keep it high. He decides to cross face, and uh, it's, it's a tough window for us to, to deliver that ball to him. All right, so that's why it's important for number two to, to outside release and then, and then cross face off the safety. Right here, you're going to see, so this, again, uh, cover four, beater 101. Let's get, this is uh, one of the, you know, this was the first game we actually introduced the concept. So we don't get it here. We'd like this guy to outside release. We're still going to get the action we want from this safety anyways. Because it's cover four, we're not too worried about that cornerback squeezing. All right. So our Pittsburgh post does its job and takes the safety. Now, this number one receiver realizes that you know, if he decide if he wanted to cross face here, he probably could, but that's going to put him on a, on an angle where if that safety did drop back, um, he'd be able to go play that. This cornerback's got flat feet, so I like the decision that that receiver made. He works a hammer at the top of this route, keeps it high and skinny, works back at the top of the numbers, and we get a walk-in score from, from 38 yards running that post. All right, so that's a good job there by our, by our number one receiver. Um, just kind of, you know, game game uh, awareness and, and working a move to get himself open, but get himself ultimately to that right spot that he needs to be. Here's one where we're going to convert to a vertical right away by this receiver um, because there is no out. We, we see man eyes here. So our receivers are, are pretty, you know, this team was giving us cover zero towards the end of the game. We get man eyes. There's a safety. He's probably he's going to come down and try to stop the run here in a little bit. I'm fine with this receiver crossing face to allow this receiver to work. So he's going to cross face early and then get on his angle. This receiver here is going to convert to a vertical because he feels like it's easier to win than trying to cross face. And if he was to cross face, getting collision all the way into the hash. So that receiver is going to do a good job converting to a to a vertical. He's going to work a wipe. That corner tries to get hands on over the shoulder, work a wipe at the top of the route, which we talked about. Then he tries to work a hammer there, converts, uh, converts himself to the ball, flips his hips, opens up, catches the ball, finds the pylon for a score. All right, so there's one where he feels like it was easier for him to win to the outside than to the inside. And honestly, on this play, he could have done both. Because number two does a good job crossing facing in that safety out here, he could have done both. Um, but at the end of the day, whatever decision you make, make 100%. And our guys, they, they know that and they try to they replicate that. So that's one of those decisions. And we we tell we, we allow our guys to own their decisions. You know, if, if he did cross face and number two doesn't get the release he does, I'm not going to be upset at number one for doing that because that was nothing he could have controlled. He made his decision. He, he went full go at it. And... Uh, it ends up working out for, for a score. So um, sometimes, again, football's not hard. Let your athletes go be athletes and, and make plays. So, again, this is, again, another drill that we're going to work on, our deeper developing routes, our posts, our verticals. Um, this year we had, a tough, we had a tough go around trying to get hands off at the attack point. So there would be a lot of times defenders are uh, grappling at our hip, trying to tug us down and not allow us to go catch the ball at its highest point. So what I did here is I got our student assistants about five yards apart with a crayon. They're going to simulate either 
a wipe. So we're going to see our receiver wipe away here. They're going to simulate a wipe, a punch, or sometimes I'd have them, hey, don't do anything and make sure they're still doing their full stride length. Because again, if they're not getting hands on, make them do their full stride length. All right, so we're going to get a wipe here, a hammer. Then I'm going to come in. I'm going to do my best to do anything I can to tug and, and grab their wrist and get their hands down. I want to see them to try to fight through that pressure, get their hips around, square their hips up to the ball once it's in the air, make the diamond and go up and catch it. All right. Our receiver does that here. He gets it over my head. What I like that he does here too. All right. He does it a little late. We talk about finishing a drill, but I like that he has the awareness to, to turn his back towards the defender. All right. We didn't have much space for this drill in this certain moment, but he has the awareness again, turn his back to the defender and keep going. So that's again, something I like to do. I knew, you know, I knew we had problems, you know, with getting hands off. So this is a drill I tried to work. I grabbed his wrist, did their, grab their Jersey, whatever I could do to get arms down to fight through that pressure. So in this clip, you're going to see, again, this is our double post. Again, this team, I showed you an earlier clip. Like I said, they do a good job getting in and out of different, different formations and different uh, shells. So they start in a one high, go to a two high. Our number two receiver up top does a good job. This is where we get that. Um, this is where we get that outside release. This is a cover two look. He gets that outside release. He knows he can cross face with the first safety he sees. All right, take himself on an angle. We're going to end up completing this ball right here. What I like that number one does up here is you can just tell here by the leverage he gets, this corner is forcing him to the inside. Take it. If he is a whole body length outside of you, take the inside release and then work your stack. So I like that he takes the inside, works his stack back to the top of the numbers like it would be a vertical. And if we want, if our quarterback hitched into it and wanted to throw this post right there, we could probably for six, right? Instead, he takes the easy money. All right, we throw a nice little two ball right there. Get the safety far enough back where we're going to catch it. Our backs are ready to him. Back you seal. We're down to the five yard line. All right, so that's a really good concept there for, for our guys. Um, this is a drill I like to do. So you saw here, you, you might have seen in this that our receivers are pretty good where, when the ball is away from their body and then getting the ball vacuum sealed into their body. So this is just a drill I do. I'll call it the popcorn drill um, where they're, they're, they have two partners. Their partner's throwing the ball up as, as high as they can. All right, usually you see up top here, we get those guys moving around. I like to get them moving around. All right, I want to see them go up, jump up as high as they can, catch the ball at, at their highest point. And while the ball is up in the air and they're coming down, I want to see them violently bring that to the chest. And you're going to see them do that. All right, I want to see them cleanly catch it. All right, where you get into trouble and where I – the only time I'll probably yell as a coach is anytime I see a receiver nonchalantly one-handed it when they could get two on it. So once they – once I see them trying to get one on it, like this, this receiver down here to the bottom – that's when I'll, you know, push ups, running, whatever, whatever the, the thing is that day. All right. But this is just a drill I like to work to, to work a high point drill for them. So in this one, you're going to see we don't play action. We're actually going to get our shallow portion out here. We knew this was on the first drive of the game. We knew these linebackers were going to drop quickly. They're very disciplined in their drop. Um, kind of feeling both offense, ball offense feeling the defense out, defense feeling the offense out, everybody's staying in their base stuff. All right, linebackers dropping out. We're going to get our shallow. We throw it to the shallow. We dump it down on a second and eight. Again, finish behind our pads. I like that our tight end's taking on a corner. All right, falling forward. It's a really nice job there um, taking that under. Here we go. We're going to get hard press. We're going to get our double post down here to this to this side here so i'd like for this receiver to work a release get even take a jab double jab do whatever you got to do outside release and then hold the top of the numbers this receiver outside release here cross face of this safety and past the rear of the next safety we're going to get a free release there we don't get the best release there by our number one receiver all right number two does a nice job our spacing's kind of all messed up um, at the end of the day, that team's in a cover two. Their safeties are expanding off the hash, and and we get a pretty open, pretty nice window there to our number two. And um, again, catching away from the body, falling on her back on the ground, getting up like like we won the lottery, catch or not, getting excited for our teammates.
Here's one again. So we, we're going to have Pittsburgh down here. We're going to have our, our double post down here. So like I said, we like to uh, tag. We don't like to mirror our plays. We like to tag uh, anything in breaking. So right here, we're going to call actually smash. We're going to get our smash here, our corner route by our tight end. This is where we're going to tag our double post and try to get that this slot receiver in this window here. And there's our triangle concept where we're able to work. So quarterback's going to read his boundary first. We see an off corner, back pedaling. Receiver does a nice job firing off the ball, low profile, getting in and out of his break. All right, catching the ball on first and 10 for six yards. Getting us in second and ten. Down here to the bottom, we're going to have our double post. This is a clip where number two is not really influenced by the outside linebacker. So he's naturally going to have that outside release. What I don't like is that he takes his angle to the post like it's a three-step slant. If he pressed this to eight yards, I don't even want to talk feet, to eight yards, all right, and whether he, the safety stays there or backpedals, whatever the case may be, and we cross his face, this is six instead of a catch tackle. We decide here that this safety is away. It's probably man look. All right, the safety is keying this number two here. Number two is going to run with that shallow. We get our free access five there. All right, we're just not able to complete. We have a, an extra second um, for our QB, and we're, we'll be able to complete it. But I uh, still gave ourselves the option there. Here we go. Last clip I have for you. Um, we're going to have our, our double post again, play action here. Now we get the outside, like I talked about a little bit on that a uh, couple clips ago where he's clearly outside leverage. Um, we tell our guys best release. That's what this number two here is going to do. I don't like there that he's pretty passive with it. He's got to take the inside release, but fight pressure with pressure all the way up until eight to nine yards cross face and then work. All right. By him doing that, He's going to take this safety down. We're working one-on-one -on -one with this matchup here with our, our one of our better athletes on the team, all right, versus one of their better athletes on the team. All right, so I like that he knows he's working a one-on-one -on -one matchup down here to the bottom. He takes his stem to the post, 12 yards, violently crosses his face, tries to get separation. All right, that ball's in the air a half a millimeter more. We're catching this and we're running with it for about 65 yards. So this is one where... We get that safety to go with our, our second post. We have our first post all alone on the opposite hash. And, and really, that's where that's where we'd, we'd like to complete it. Um, so, you know, that's our two receiver stuff. That's really what we're working on. Uh, smash, slants, and double posts. I'm sure it's not different to what you guys are, are doing. But um, at the end of the day, uh, teach your routes. Teach your quarterback where the receivers are going to be. Uh, I guarantee your completion rate will be much, much higher if you do that. And, uh, you know, ha have a reason for, for doing it. Don't and, and don't ever just call, you know, mirror routes into each other. You know, give your quarterback a, a side to work and um, let him work that side. All right. Thank you.